That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I want to tell you a story. This is what I'm talking about. This is my territory. Well, where are you going? I don't get paid. I don't work. Well, I mean, do you really? The park is open 24-7, 365. <laughs> there are broader ideas at work. Where's my stuff, Barkley? The locals, they call it El Radar. Tootski. You have to talk to me, Murph. Where are you going? Go to hell. Yes. Three six five. Oh, come on, Murph. Same age. Three six five. Oh, Murph territory. Go to hell. Person. Go on. Tootski. Murph. Girl. Story. Park is open. Murph. Girl. Yes. Tootski. Murph. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so dumb. Definitely also just more like Leo's character than like McConaughey's character. But yeah, somehow one of my favorite McConaughey scenes, even though he's not the star of this movie. Um, anyway, let uh, get out of the get up. Uh, all right, much better. I hate wearing suits. Um, I spend most of my time in a gi. So right after that last video, when I posted my top five favorite audiobooks, this one was kind of um, put on my radar. El Radar. <laughs> by a few friends and it definitely jumped to the top of one of my favorite audiobooks. And before I get into this, I should say that your enjoyment of this book might largely depend on your enjoyment of Matthew McConaughey in general. If you are not a fan of his kind of mannerisms, this might not be for you. Although if you're not a fan of his mannerisms, but you want to pick up some little tidbits of wisdom that he does have in this book, I would recommend the physical book. However, if you are a fan of Matthew McConaughey, this is something you have to listen to. This audiobook is narrated by the actor and it lives on his breath. Like this is meant for him to, to say out loud. He's just a phenomenal storyteller. By far the number one strength for me for this book is listening to it because hearing him narrate his own story is exquisite. It's perfect. And again, especially if you like his work, that's the medium that I, I would highly recommend that you pick this up in. This is also going to be a spoiler free review for the most part, because I really think one of the treats of this book is going through kind of the episodic journey of Matthew McConaughey's life, because there are some interesting things that I never thought were going to pop up here. I might mention a few of these. I'll allude to them, but I won't give away any of the details of them, because again, one of the joys of this book, and it's not very long, even as an audiobook, I think it was six hours and, and something, which is a very short listen. But discovering how we went through some of these things and some of these things that I had never known of before was kind of a real treat and was a surprise as, as I listened through the audio. So Green Lights is essentially a memoir that goes through a lot of the journal entries, or at least the pivotal ones, throughout Matthew McConaughey's life from childhood all the way through till present day. It spans four different continents and a range of characters who all come together to basically contribute to the lessons that McConaughey uses in his career and in his family life as well. And this is not at all the story of some drug adult spoiled rich kid who, you know, messed up his life and then had to claw his way back. McConaughey stays in impressively on top of on top of things throughout throughout the book and throughout the course of his life. Now, I think the practice of keeping a journal is a pretty interesting thing, and I think it kind of plays into a lot of what keeps Matthew McConaughey grounded, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit because I think that there's a lot of strength in this book. I think that if you're looking for deep philosophical wisdom and you have read actual philosophy, Matthew McConaughey might not be the person to go to for like deep insights, but I don't think that's what it's really about. I think it's basically picking apart bits of wisdom that he has kind of gleaned throughout his life and how that's kind of contributed to the person he is now. And I find that his path was a unique one and it was an interesting one because he both seems to toe the line between being grounded and being completely aware of what he is exactly capable of and really leveraging that in terms of the success that he's had in his life. Now, this is not a rags to riches story. I would not consider it that. Yes, there are some troubles that he has in his childhood, but I would rather bill this as a turbulence to triumph story. And I think that's something that a lot more people can relate to in general. Rags to riches stories are great. They're things that we like to we like to read about. But a lot of us have something in our past or something, some intrinsic part about us that does cause some of that turbulence that we might have a hard time pushing through. I feel like fame is a funny thing. And I think that a lot of people have critiques of what famous people do or are like. And this isn't to excuse any obvious like heinous behavior or criminal behavior that's completely different. 
But even in terms of general attitude, I feel like people judge or cast judgment on people who have achieved a certain level of fame because they themselves have no idea what it's like to have people basically cater to every whim of your existence because you've achieved that level of, I guess, societal recognition. I really do think that has a tendency to change people. And if that isn't apparent and blatantly obvious, you can look at basically the career paths of a lot of childhood stars and see how that is soured and poisoned a lot of lives along the way. And even if you look at people who are not childhood stars, I mean, you have people at far ends of the spectrum where you have, uh, oh my God, something Gleason, what's his name? The guy who played Joffrey. The guy who played Joffrey from Game of Thrones was absolutely despised. And he gave a talk on how he hates celebrity and how his entire purpose was to portray that character as somebody who should be hated, but people are unable to divorce the character from the actor and understand that difference. And that can be incredibly grating on somebody's personality where you carry this baggage around with you wherever you go. This also happened with the, with the actress who played uh, Walter White's wife in Breaking Bad. She got tons of hate mail and death threats for basically being a phenomenal actor and playing the role that she was asked to play and doing a fantastic job at doing it. Now this can create a lot of self-deprecation in certain instances, but you go on the other far side of the spectrum and you get your Kanye Wests who are, I mean, like I don't mean to, to point the lens in a, in a negative light when there's clearly mental health issues at play, but there are obviously certain megalomania tendencies that exist within that kind of personality. And that can be a consequence or maybe even if it's not a con consequence, definitely exacerbated by a level of fame that being at that societal status kind of brings. And again, I think Matthew McConaughey's strength is towing the line between self-deprecation and uh, being self-aggrandizing in a way that he's very aware of what he can and cannot do and understands how to pivot to find the silver lining in any situation in his life. And that's really the premise of Green Lights. Green Lights is basically him focusing on those little opportunities and being able to seize them and capitalize on them, even when other things in his life might not be ideal. In certain instances, that's by following the path of least resistance. In other instances, it's by focusing on something that he's really driven to do and pouncing on the opportunity and putting himself in front of the spotlight that would allow him to get that opportunity. And I think that's a really hard thing for people to do. Sometimes people don't have enough faith in themselves. Um, to take that step and in other instances people have too much faith of, in, in themselves and they're a little bit delusional about what they can or cannot do and maybe they have to build that skill set up a little bit and I find that's really where a lot of the wisdom in this book comes from is towing the line between those two things now the entertaining part about this is the journey that Matthew McConaughey brings you through his life as he's doing this and you're going to hit on many of the major beats you're going to hear what his family was like you're going to hear what it was like for him to achieve certain major roles in his life if you're a fan of Matthew McConaughey, you know he's gone through several different stages in his life. Like he started off with uh, Dazed and Confused, he was the rom-com guy, um, then he started kind of transitioning into more serious roles. In recent history, he's had several serious roles that maybe didn't see the spotlight quite so much. And he goes into detail about how he faced those circumstances and how he pivots from one to the next based on what his life is telling him. As somebody who's been forced to pivot recently due to COVID-19 and the lockdown and has been personally affected by my business, I felt this very much. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I related to this. So in the combat sport community, there is often a lot of grit and perseverance and talking about pushing through various adversity. And there was a lot of that talk when our gyms got shut down and we were no longer able to operate regularly. This deeply affected my mental health uh, and the mental health of many gym owners and people who relied, at least in part, on their combat sport community to help along with their mental health and their physical health in their day-to-day -day lives. And that can be an incredibly powerful tool that you can lose and, and not just lose, but be forced into isolation where a lot of these issues with mental health can become a lot worse. And I found that what I ended up doing was instead of bearing down, gritting my teeth and trying to meet it head on, the one thing that really allowed me to thrive was shifting my focus to other areas of my life where I could dedicate myself and feel some semblance of peace of mind that really ended up getting me through. 
a lot of that came down to reading in the channel uh, that I'm running today in terms of trying to expose more people to more books. A lot of that came down to spending more time with my family and my young daughter. And Matthew McConaughey brings this up. Sometimes when there's tension in his life, even if his career is going well, maybe it's because he's not focusing on other aspects of his life, like his family. So he takes that time to pivot and focus on that. And the one interesting thing that he finds is once he starts pivoting and focusing on the things that are creating that tension within him when he's listening to that impulse that's kind of intuitively built into us if we just let it kind of come to the surface, uh, the more it actually impacted him and strengthened other areas of his life. Just one more example of how the kind of green light principle of pivoting to find those opportunities and capitalize on them is a really worthwhile endeavor. And the way he lays it out, and not just a preachy way. Now, he does have these little he calls them bumper stickers and there's there, there are these like little vignettes in between the chapters where he has a little bit of a little tidbit of wisdom and i think the smart thing that matt mcconaughey does is call them bumper stickers instead of like here's your piece of wisdom like he's not trying to preach to you this is just his little pithy way of kind of recalling that little lesson that really rings true to him and maybe it'll ring true to you. Another way that that really manifested was, and this is relevant to my business as well, was he was talking about become less impressed and more involved. This little tidbit of wisdom w was interesting because it's a nicer way of putting a kind of crass saying that I heard a long time ago, which was never get romantic about how you make your money. And one of the reasons why that is, it's it sounds a little gross when you put it in terms of like economical impulses like that, but the basic purpose behind the saying is that you can get lost in what you're doing and think it's so cool that you forget to dedicate yourself to the thing that made you passionate about it to begin with. This is probably something that actors and anybody who's achieved a certain level of fame has to deal with quite a bit. You've reached the top of the top. You are a social icon. You are a celebrity. And it's probably really easy to rest on your laurels. Even from like a local business owner perspective like myself, uh, running a jujitsu academy was literally a dream come true. Like that's, if I could only do that for the rest of my life, I would die happy. And there were times in my business career where I rested on those laurels a little bit too much and I kind of lost the plot by just being comfortable with where I was. And those were times when the business probably wasn't doing as good as it should be, not just in terms of a financial sense, but probably in terms of my dedication towards my students and my and my members in general. I mean, the fact that he can do this at such a height and level of fame and celebrity kind of lets you know that you can focus that lens back towards yourself, regardless of what level of success that you might be at. Now, again, I like how he's able to, to stay grounded, but there are certain aspects that he brings up that might rub, rub people a little bit the wrong way. A good friend of mine pointed this out and I completely understand where he's coming from. He mentioned that it was a little bit too much when McConaughey said that himself in 10 years is who he considers his hero. I mean, sometimes you gotta create a little bit of a mythology for yourself if you wanna try to achieve those goals, right? Like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had the saying, it's not, don't ask yourself what you wanna be, ask yourself who you wanna be. And that was something that actually really stuck with me quite a bit. And I think that's just McConaughey's way of putting it. It's not accidental that McConaughey does this. It's by design. He ruthlessly kind of self-examines a lot of the different parts of his life. And I think a lot of that comes down to the practice of keeping a journal because it really forces you to take inventory of your decisions and your behaviors throughout your life. And in that way, you can really evaluate and see where you need to make changes. A lot of people go through things passively and that's not, a, that's not necessarily a fault. I think that's just the default. I think that's kind of how we natural go, naturally go about our things. We don't question our habits. We don't question our desires. We don't question our behaviors and our routines. And I find that a lot of what has led to my growth and my ability to do certain things has really come from self-examination and a little bit of brutal honesty um, focusing that lens inwards in order to bring those things out and that has to be coupled with a little bit of the courage and, and, and just a smidge of recklessness that McConaughey also brings to his approach in life one of the things I will spoil I will spoil a little bit it's not really a spoiler it's more of an illusion he quite literally chases his dreams and he's he has a recurring dream that comes up in the form of a wet dream <laughs> And it's very bizarre that that's how it manifests, but it, it leads to two separate trips in the book that are super entertaining. And as somebody who uh, teaches grappling to other people, that actually plays into one of the uh, into one of the stories. Not going to explain what it is, but I would have never expected that that actually happened to him. 
So I really, really enjoyed this. This one was an absolute blast. I did not expect to like this one as much as I did. And to be honest with you, I keep hearing that from several people. Um, this book has been recommended to me from people who read far more than I do and people who read far less than I do. So if you hate Matthew McConaughey, probably not for you. Might still get something out of his physical book though. But if you like him at all, check out the audiobook. Definitely a treat, five out of five would recommend very accessible little tidbits of wisdom and super fun also our wives have the same name so that was kind of cool if you read this one please let me know what you think of it in the comments and stay tuned for the next video Peace.